Hi, I'm Jeff from New York. Please like and subscribe. Young Billionaire, Season 2, Episode 2, The True Story of Lelaine. It started to rain. Keep going, Jeff said, flipping through the pages of Lelaine's diary. Yes, Austin answered with a trembling voice. He knew that Jeff might be angry with what he said. Jeff had opened the diary to May 25th, the day Lelaine went to Los Angeles. May 25th. As soon as I got off the plane, I started thinking about Jeff. I'm pathetic. If he knew what I was thinking, he'd laugh. We had a video chat, and I still insisted that he stay in New York. But deep down, I really wanted him to come and be with me. May 26th. I was really jealous when I saw that Elsa, Sophia and others had boyfriends coming to pick them up after rehearsals. It's really lonely on the bus every night. May 29th. I haven't called Jeff in a few days. I'm afraid that when I see him, I won't be able to stop crying. It's embarrassing for him to see me like this. I can't be a burden to him. May 30th. It's really wet and cold in Los Angeles right now. I got soaked coming back to the hotel, and I'm still very cold now, even in my bed. The window in my room faces northwest, the direction of New York. I stared out that window for ages, missing Jeff and wishing he would come to Los Angeles to be with me. I wish he could hear me calling to him. Jeff stared at Lelaine's delicate handwriting, and he could almost feel her loneliness coming through the words on the page. He regretted that he had chosen to remain in New York. If he hadn't, Lelaine wouldn't have been so lonely in Los Angeles. Finally, he found the last entry of the diary. He hoped to find some clues in it, but the contents completely exceeded his expectations. June 4th. It's cloudy today. Yesterday, I participated in the Sky's The Limit talent show. I never expected Elsa to set me up. She poured something into my water, and I was in so much pain. During our performance, every time I moved, I felt like I was being stabbed. Elsa framed me for poisoning Kara's dog, and Kara slapped me really hard. Only Christine and Sophia stood up for me. The dog rushed at me, and my stomach hurt so much that I could barely move. But I had to run, and every step felt as if someone was stabbing me. Jeff's eyes shone with tears. He clenched his fists tighter and tighter, completely unaware that he was damaging the diary. When I was in the icy cold water, the dog bit me. I felt that I was better off dead. Every second in this world just brought more suffering. And eventually, I chose to give up. It was so quiet in the water. But then I saw the diamond necklace and I thought of Jeff, and I knew I couldn't leave this world without saying goodbye to him. I didn't blame him at all. I only hoped that he would live a happy life without me. Tears slid down Jeff's face, and his hands began to tremble. He couldn't imagine how much Lelaine had suffered that day. Then Matthew saved me. I called Jeff, but he didn't answer. He just texted me to say his friend would pick me up. It's time for me to go back to New York. I'll do my best to keep what happened in Los Angeles from Jeff. I don't want him to feel bad. After reading Lelaine's diary, Jeff kneeled on the ground and cried out in grief. Lelaine's beautiful handwriting was captivating, and sorrow pierced his heart. When Lelaine had been in danger and when she had needed him the most, he had been happily drinking and chatting. His heart felt like it was being torn apart, and there was nobody he hated more than himself. He slapped his face twice and then dropped his hands onto the ground, crying sorrowfully. Mr. Florento, Kenneth said, frowning as he squatted to help him up. Jeff's behavior was making everyone nervous. Jeff burst into tears. He looked at Austin, who was still being held down, and asked, What did you do to Lelaine after you took her to the hotel? Where is she now? Austin was so scared that his legs gave way and he dropped to the ground. His wife was also scared as she kneeled beside him, and their hearts were pounding. After I took her to the hotel, well, I meant to. I wanted to, you know, with her. Austin babbled trying to stand up. Jeff kicked him back to the ground. Bastard. He roared. He stepped on Austin's face a few times. Austin wrapped his arms around his head and curled his body, not daring to resist. When Jeff stopped, Austin threw himself onto the ground in front of him. I'm sorry, Mr. Florento. He sniveled. I'm a bastard and I deserve to die. I'm just a filthy animal. What happened next? Jeff demanded as he glared at Austin. He was a little afraid of what Austin might say next. I didn't. Austin started. He wanted to explain that he hadn't touched Lelaine, hoping it would lessen Jeff's anger. But then he heard a woman's voice coming from outside the courtyard. 
Who are you people? Let go of me. It was Elsa's voice. A couple of men arrived, dragging Elsa with them. Mr. Florento, Mr. Stokes, we checked Austin's phone and discovered that Miss West was sent a message claiming a friend of Mr. Florento would pick her up. One of the men said, his expression was serious. The message was sent by this woman. Jeff glared at Elsa, feeling nothing but hatred. He should have guessed that she was behind this. But after spending the night with her, his attitude toward her head softened a little. The coldness in Jeff's gaze made Elsa tremble. Two of Jeff's men pushed her to her knees in front of him. Go on. Jeff said, turning back to Austin. What happened next? Me and her. Austin stole a glance at Elsa and found her staring at him. Her eyes narrowed and he gulped with fear. He was convinced that Elsa's family was really powerful and his survival depended on her goodwill. From Austin's point of view, he had no choice but to do what Elsa had ordered. I'm sorry, sir. He said. I couldn't help myself. I slept with her. I'm so sorry. Jeff's mind went blank and he staggered back, almost falling. You put your hands on Lelaine. Jeff asked. When Kenneth saw his reaction, he ordered his men to beat up Austin. But Jeff stopped him. What happened next? Then my wife arrived and I was afraid that she would find out. So I hung Lelaine out the window. Austin said. But then my wife came in and she... He stopped, too scared to continue. What? Jeff shouted. Speak. My wife opened the window. Austin said cowering. And Lelaine fell. When he finished speaking, he lowered his head and said. Mr. Florento, I'm sorry, I deserve to die. Jeff's heart ached. Where is she now? My wife and I ran downstairs, but Lelaine had already disappeared. Austin said. I don't know where she went. Maybe someone took her to the hospital. Austin's wife looked shocked. Round everyone up and send them around all the hospitals in New York. Kenneth said. One of his men left the room to carry out the order. Austin trembled as he lay on the ground, sneaking glances at Elsa. He had done what she had told him to do, and he hoped she would keep her promise. Elsa gave Austin a look of reassurance. Jeff closed his eyes, and tears streamed down his face. His heart was filled with sorrow, and he truly hated himself. The thunder grew louder, and the rain came down even harder. Jeff roared in rage. He kicked fiercely on Austin's stomach while the man lay huddled on the ground, moaning in pain and spitting out blood. Then Jeff kicked Austin's wife to the ground. He didn't care that she was a woman. Jeff, are you planning to beat them to death? Elsa asked, still kneeling on the ground. Calm down. Lelaine has been assaulted, but what's done is done. She had to protect Austin, otherwise he might change his story and tell Jeff the truth. If that happened, then all her efforts would be for nothing. Shut up. Jeff cursed angrily at her. I was just telling the truth. She said. Think about it. Lelaine has already been ruined by another man. You're an important member of a powerful family, so could you really accept a woman who wasn't pure? No, I didn't think so. Vent your anger on them and then let them go. If you beat them to death, you'll be arrested. Jeff stared at Elsa and walked toward her one step at a time. So it doesn't really matter where Lelaine is now, does it? She said. But it's okay. I can give you anything that she could. She panicked as she noticed Jeff's expression. Jeff, please. I'm just trying to help. Jeff slapped her, knocking her flat on the ground. Blood flowed from the corner of her mouth. Give me a gun. Jeff bellowed as he looked over to where Austin and his wife were still lying prone. He stretched his hand out toward Kenneth and waited. Yes, sir. Kenneth responded, shocked. Jeff had never been this violent before. Kenneth asked his men for a gun and then handed it over to Jeff. Mr. Florento, please have mercy. Austin begged. Please don't kill me. I'll do anything. I'll be your slave anything. Mr. Florento, please let me go. Austin's wife joined in. I wasn't really involved. I didn't know. Lelaine is my woman. Jeff yelled. No one else can touch her, especially not you. He pointed the gun at Austin. No, Mr. Florento, please. Austin pleaded. Desperate to explain that he hadn't really slept with Lelaine, and he had only been repeating what Elsa had told him to say. Wait, listen to me. I swear I didn't. Bang, 
Bang! Two consecutive shots rang out and Austin never got to finish speaking. He and his wife had both been shot in the head. Thick blood flowing from their wounds, their bodies crumpled, and a pool of blood gradually formed around them. 